The good old days, when a young black girl far, far away from Hollywood in a different continent with a different cultural setup could watch movies and series made by people who look and think differently from her, and not once was she force-fed messaging or made to partake in the abhorrent wet dreams of the marginalized. Hours and hours of recorded therapy sessions of the truly broken and upset at the world, packaged and paraded to innocent viewers as modern art. Ah, the good old days before 2012 when the black people on the screen of the said young black girl were actual people and not just props to irritate the regular movie lover with the message and satisfy the insatiable thirst for validation by the self-proclaimed morally virtuous. Then came inclusion. And well, here we are in 2024. Star Wars is patriarchal. But in my world, nerds are gay. <laughs> Good grief. My name is Dio, and this is a Nigerian take. I first conceptualized this video title back in January after watching Asha in Wish and Ruth in Leave the World Behind. I did videos covering both films at the time, you can go check them out as well. Those films made me realize how Hollywood had developed an irritating pattern of writing really unlikable black female characters. I mentioned earlier that 2012 was in fact the end of good cinema with heroes and likable characters for Hollywood and truly what has followed is a catastrophe of stupidity. To be honest, 2010 was the actual end but with two years buffer for the dumpster fire to make its way in. So we will start there. In 2011, The Help was released, a huge success for black representation on screen with Viola Davis and Octavia Spencer, both pulling brilliant performances. I especially liked Octavia Spencer's part as Minnie in it. I still remember how her character would say, Minnie don't burn chicken. And this really funny scene where she dished out justice. <laughs> Literally. What do you put in here that makes it taste so good? That good vanilla from Mexico and something else real special. Eat my shit. <laughs> While there was black representation in The Help, it was historically plausible and whatever actions were taken by the black female characters were justified. So I, as a viewer, from another part of the world was never taken out of the experience or getting confused by what those characters stood for. In the same year, arguably the best drama series to ever grace our screens, Suits, was released. And we got a duo in Jessica Piercing, an incredible strong black female character, a girl boss, if you will. The only girl boss I approve of, really. Even with everything that comes with being the administrator of a law firm, rising to the top in a world of men, Jessica was fundamentally a good person. The writers managed to show us her struggles as a working woman and not once did we feel like a message was being hammered at us. Sadly, those are my last memories of black female characters that could truly be admired. Written authentically, without the black people are victims and so they must always be good undertone that is plaguing modern Hollywood. Unfortunately, I can no longer think of the help's success without being reminded of what came after. The shift. It started slowly with characters like Annalise Keating, which while they were written much better than what we have these days, and most people may not have even picked up on it back then, for me, there was something very wrong fundamentally with Annalise Keating's personality. It felt as if in order to compete with white male leads, they added a bunch of really inhumane sides to her which made her quite unlikable. 
Jesus, the woman could have had a giant, if white males can do it, so can a strong black woman sign on her forehead. I recall how much better I felt watching Harvey Specter and Jessica doing their thing, decent people, and how much of an ick I got watching Annalise. This was the first time ever it felt to me like, oh, this isn't just entertainment anymore. It was really trying a bit too hard with all the twists to make Annalise more insufferable and strip her of her humanity. It's only declined from there. At least back then, writers did the work to make moral ambiguity look more cool and have a stronger bottom line that makes you think. But now we are presented with straight up insufferable, unlikable, poorly written black female characters which we are apparently supposed to like anyway because of their identity as black women. It doesn't matter that they are straight up terrible people, the marginalized are always justified. Black girl magic! I'm getting ahead of myself there a bit, sorry we'll get to this part soon, but let's go back slightly. In came the race swabs of beloved characters and the changing of storylines to girl bossify them. Of course, strong black female characters are not allowed to be vulnerable and feel things like normal humans. They don't need no help from nobody. They can do it all. In the original Little Mermaid, Ariel saves Prince Eric in the beginning using her talent as a mermaid. And then he saves her from Ursula at the end, using his skills as a captain in one of the most epic scenes in Disney animation history. Prior to Eric's heroics here, most of the story is focused on Ariel's wants and needs, Ariel's dreams and choices, etc. Eric risking his life to face a giant witch, Ursula, as a mere human, gave his character some depth. It spoke to how far he was willing to go for this mysterious girl that he loved. Even when it all happened quickly and he had just found out that she was different from him. And let's not forget that because of this difference in species, there was a very good chance that Eric won't get to be with her. Yet, he did not hesitate to risk his life. This gave balance and beauty to the story. They had both saved each other not just for their love to exist and grow, but as decent, upright people. When Ariel saved Eric, there was no chance she would get to be with him. Same goes for when Eric saved Ariel. Now enter the strong black little mermaid of 2023. Eric is rendered completely useless to the plot and girl boss Ariel gets to save him twice. First as a mermaid and then as a girl boss dragging her fin across a ship outside of the water and somehow knowing how to operate the ship, something that was meant to be Eric's specialty, ultimately killing Ursula. Woohoo! Look at me! I don't need no man! Are you not impressed? Why not take Eric out of the story entirely whilst you're at it? Beats me! Strong, diverse Ariel was only mildly insufferable because of the changes made to her by shallow activists whose tiny brain cells cannot come together to see balance between love and life. What they instead see is, oddly enough, competition between white men and black women, the former representing the privileged and the latter the marginalized. Even then, the film wasn't completely ruined owing mostly to the parts of the plot left untouched from the original. When writing this video, I decided to watch Princess and the Frog again, and believe me, I was damn near tears. Disney really went from Princess Tiana, a charismatic, hard-working young woman who rose above her status through determination, love, kindness, and not to forget common decency, to Asha. A soulless, entitled brat with everything handed to her, no character development whatsoever, and nothing of value to offer beyond black representation on screen. It's not fair. Just wow. Watching Princess and the Frog, I had not a single care in the world. I was fully engrossed, laughing, nearly crying even. So many great twists and touching moments. Tiana's growth, finding love, her challenges, the challenges she faced, they both face, ultimately to achieve a life that is whole. I watched the real story. Not the empty shell box ticking black female character we get to see these days. See, what really bothers me is how 
to any normal human with their heads screwed on right watching, these black female characters are not so subtly doing really unlikable things. But somehow, the way the plots unfold, these brilliant writers expect us to interpret them as good people. Their actions have no consequences, and other characters whose actions in response to these black female characters are perfectly justified are painted as the bad guys. This is the entirety of Ruth's character in Leave the World Behind, where Amanda is painted as racist, even though her reaction to Ruth and her father's suspicious appearance at their doorstep in the middle of the night is perfectly normal. We see this to an even larger degree with May and Osha in the recently concluded disaster series, The Acolyte. The power of he is the bad guy for protecting a child. He dies by the hands of the child's twin and gives his approval for her to turn evil because he was apparently guilty of something. Like, what? You're kidding, right? I reviewed the Acolytes episode by episode on my TikTok. I'll drop the links in the description if you want to see those. But the bottom line here is every black female character in this series sucks ass. They're pretty insufferable to watch. They take reprehensible actions, yet the whole time the show is telling us that everyone reacting to them is bad. Okay, women are apparently a protected class that can do no wrong. We should feel sorry for them and let them misbehave because they are supposedly marginalized. Yes, yes. The Acolyte may be the worst case of dumb sociopath writing I've seen yet, but like the other instances I've touched and some I couldn't mention this time round, the ever justified insufferable black female character has been soiling our entertainment for years now. Majority of audiences around the world fail to connect with these characters for obvious reasons and when we speak out, the race victim card is never far off. We are accused of being old white male bigots that hate diversity but here I am, a young black woman, saying to Hollywood, please stop. All you're doing is proving that Hollywood was right all along to hire white males as white males have given us great entertainment because they were focused on just that. <sighs> History tells us that much of humanity is trial and error. Now that black people have better opportunities on screen and behind the scenes, it is being squandered on this petty, backwards-minded nonsense. This is the trial, and so far it is resulting in error. Eventually, the self-proclaimed morally virtuous will be over this virtue signaling trend and the so-called marginalized would have gained nothing but giving back the sway power to the so-called privileged ones. Honestly, I, I don't mind it. They may not look like me, but they certainly have created more magic and happiness for audiences through their authentic characters and stories than those that look like me. This has gone too far, and it needs to stop. Hey there, like I always say, I may be completely off the mark on this one. If you agree, you disagree, share your thoughts in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. Adabo.